I read Nobody Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, so let's be some of the people who do talk about it. So I shamedly have not read any of Patricia Lockwood's books yet, including her famous one, Priest Daddy. I know, I know, shameful thing I'm outing myself for. I didn't quite know what to expect. I just thought that the cover looked cool. So (laughs) I went into this book not knowing what to expect, and it kind of split itself into three different sections. So The first section, I thought it seemed kind of like a dystopian science fiction novel. It opened talking about reaching out into this portal, people living under the evil rule of a dictator. It really sounded like it was Divergent or The Hunger Games coming right up for me. And then it went on and I realized, no, this is actually real life. Is it a satire of real life? Is it a criticism of real life? I'm not quite sure, but... The portal that she is talking about is social media. So think about your Twitters, your Instagrams, Facebook, the wide gaping chasm on the internet.com that people can fall right into. None of the people in this story are named, but our main character has earned some sort of internet notoriety for her incendiary and soundbitey tweets. The one that really tipped the scales for her was, can dogs be twins? And somehow that has earned her a revered place among scholars? Surely not. But she has somehow been invited to do lectures all over the world about her viewpoints and her irreverent takes on things. It seems a little far-fetched for me that someone who tweets things like, the eels in London are on cocaine, would be suddenly revered and held up as this new age prophet and invited to do all sorts of lectures. But that's what happens in the book. And she meets with a lot of other social media people who are kind of like-minded. They also put out these perfectly crafted 240 character sound bites into the wild for people to consume and react against. They all seem just on the wrong side of benevolent. They all seem kind of sarcastic, Rye is if everything in the world is kind of there existing specifically as something for them to react negatively to. In fact, our author can't seem to react to things IRL without turning it into a sound bite. So she sees columns and spits out colonialism. It's almost like these manufactured reactions have taken over any sort of semblance of real humanity or emotions. It even refers to a man who sees an ultrasound of his baby and tweets out, I saw my daughter's tits for the first time, and then later kind of says to himself in shame, I've been like this so long, I don't know how to be anymore. I don't know if it was Patricia Lockwood's intent to make these people seem like fools. But that's how it came off to me. The whole thing seemed almost like a condemnation of social media and the people that we give our attention and likes to. And we've turned them into internet gurus almost. We turn to them for their hot takes, for their opinions. The only problem is the pundits are more interested in saying things that will elevate their own social standing, their own clout than they are on reacting to the actual matters at hand and really digging deeply into them. So it seems almost like the movie, is it Being There? No, Network. Wait, Being There has Chauncey Gardner. Okay. It seems almost like the movie Being There, where people start to revere this guy named Chauncey Gardner and think that he's this modern-day messiah and start following everything he's saying, when really he's just a simple guy who doesn't really know anything he's talking about, and people have somehow turned his words into gospel. Same thing with the movie Network. You see this man have a mental break and scream at the top of his lungs, I'm mad as hell and I'm not taking it anymore. What he really needed was hospitalization and some good therapy. What happens instead is that the media, hungry for the next big thing, structure an entire lineup around him, put him on TV under these dramatic colored lights, 
and give him this platform when really he's just a mentally broken guy. But as I said, I can't tell if this is supposed to be a condemnation of those social media scions or if it's supposed to be just a humorous look at them. Patricia Lockwood herself is quite prolific on Twitter. Of course, it would make sense that she gets invited to give lectures all over the place because she's also a celebrated author. I think that's maybe where the disconnect was for me with the main character in this story. Although this is a novel, it's not based on Patricia Lockwood herself. It is kind of ripped from the headlines a little bit and taken from pieces of her own life. But that's where the disconnect was for me, was that our main character didn't really accomplish any of those things. All she did was put out these tweets that went viral, and somehow that turned her into this big mouthpiece for America. And I don't know that that's enough. I don't know that that's enough. But then the story turns completely because our main character gets a couple of texts from her mother saying, something has happened, can you get here quickly? And so she does. She gets there quite quickly and finds out that her pregnant sister has had some complications with the baby. Suddenly, our main character is pulled away from her online social media life. She's pulled away from the portal and kind of forced to face these real life issues going on. Now, the niece is born with a condition that sometimes for the cruel of heart would be almost meme worthy. And for a woman who lives completely in memes, I feel like this is where the story really turns for her because she begins to see meaning in life and she sees that her niece isn't a meme. She isn't something worth putting into a soundbite. She's pure, innocent just unadulterated love. The situation that they're in is heartbreaking. I don't want to give too much away because I want you to read the story and I want you to go through it with her. But seeing the shift in everybody's priorities, everybody's ways of thinking, I don't know if I would call it a redemption story or not because I don't know if this was someone seeing the error of their ways suddenly and coming to the light. After the crisis has passed, after things are supposed to be going back to quote unquote normal, the siren song of the portal does call her back. And I don't know if that is supposed to be a failure to find redemption if it's supposed to be sinking right back down into the cesspool, or if it's supposed to be just kind of getting back to some semblance of real life. It could be any one of those things. It could be a combination of everything at the same time. And I don't know that the experience with her niece is supposed to bring her any life lessons that she then takes with her to the portal, such as be kind to others or think about more important things. For she gives a speech right after that is still full of crazy witticisms such as Abraham Lincoln is daddy. I mean, okay. So I'm left not quite knowing what to think. I mean, it started seeming almost like a Timothy Leary-esque acid trip without the pleasures of actually taking drugs. Just this stream of consciousness, psychedelic-ish way of thinking that just carries you through the book and then all of a sudden real life slams it to the stop and things become a lot more concrete and you see what's going on and you're forced to deal with real life, with real emotions and real terms of expressing yourself. And then once that has passed, that is but a moment and then you go right back into the stream of consciousness portal. As you can see, I'm still working out all my thoughts as I'm talking through it with you guys to analyze the book which incidentally I thought was quite good. I'm not trying to say all of this as a criticism of Patricia Lockwood of the book or of people online. Although I do find it kind of strange when people are held up to this almost messianic status, you know, with tons of followers when really they're just as lost as the flock themselves. But it's just an interesting look. It's an interesting way to look at everything. It's an interesting, gosh. Okay, obviously I haven't figured out all my thoughts on it yet. I think this is one that's gonna keep bouncing around in the brain for a while afterwards, but I will say, good book, good, good book. And the cover that I mentioned before that I thought was so cool, um, actually is. It features this big circle that's kind of reflecting the world back to it. It has a little bit of M.C. Escher-esque quality to it where you can't tell exactly where the shadows and light play. Maybe it's symbolic of the portal itself, that it never ends. It never finds a resolution. It never really brings you anywhere except back to the beginning. It's just quite interesting to think about. 
So I did scan through some reviews on Goodreads and saw a lot of these got um, two and three star reviews. There were a lot of people who didn't like it, a lot of people who did. I can't wait to see what you guys think, and thank you so much for watching. Talk to y'all later. <laughs> Lulu, it's okay.